Okay, so, you know, we always get questions about self-help, right? Like, everyone's trying to be their best self these days. It's true. It's like a universal human thing, isn't it? This desire to grow and improve. Totally. And we got that stack of articles from you, so. Oh, yeah. We are diving deep into the world of self-help literature. Sounds good to me. All right, so this article, Transformative Journeys, Exploring the World of Self-Help Literature hmm. by Mervyn Corbin, okay. really caught our eye. And uh, what did you, what jumped out of you? Well, he talks about how self-help can really empower people. Right. Give you, give you the tools to take control. Exactly. Like you're not just stuck. You can actually change your life. Yeah. I love how Corbin points out that the whole self-help thing, it's always evolving. Right. Oh, absolutely. Like It reflects what's going on in the world, right? Totally. He gives the example of, you know, early 20th century. He's got Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, yeah. It was all about mindset and success, right? Which makes sense because back then it was the Industrial Revolution. Right. People moving to cities, everything was changing. Huge change, yeah. So naturally, people wanted advice on how to thrive in that environment. Exactly, exactly. And then as we kind of moved into the later part of the century, you saw this shift towards like inner peace. Right, finding your purpose Resilient. yourself, yeah. Yeah, like the alchemist, for example. Yes, Paulo Coelho. Oh, that's the one, it's all about following your dreams. It's a classic for sure. Yeah. And I think it really resonated with people who felt a bit lost in the, you know, the kind of corporate world. Totally, okay, so Corbin also talks about some of the big names in self-help today. Yes, he does. Huh. He dives into folks like Tony Robbins. Right. Especially his book, Awaken the Giant Within. Yeah, Awaken the Giant Within. All about taking control of your emotions. Oh, I see. So like immediate action kind of thing. Exactly. Exactly. But then you've got someone like James Clear and his book, Atomic Habits, which is a completely different approach. Where do you how so? Well, Clear's all about those small, consistent changes over time. Ah, so it's more of a slow and steady wins the race. Exactly. And it makes you wonder, right? Like, is one approach better than the other? Or maybe it depends on the person. That's what I was thinking. Like, what works for one person might not work for another. Exactly. And that's where I think Corbin's emphasis on active reading comes in. Oh, interesting. What do you mean by that? So it's not enough to just read these books passively, right? Yeah. You've got to engage with them, think critically and figure out how they apply to your own life. I see. It's about finding what works for you. Exactly. So you're saying we got to be our own self-help editors. Exactly. You pick and choose what works for you. Like creating your own personalized growth plan. I like that, yeah. But, you know, one thing that always gets me about self-help is this whole idea of individual responsibility. Like, sure, taking control is important, but... What? But what about all the stuff we can't control? You know, like, life throws curveballs sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Life is messy. And I think Corbin brings up a really good point about being critical consumers of this advice. Oh, yeah. How so? Well, yeah. it's easy to fall into that trap of, oh, if I just follow these steps, I'll have the perfect life. But that's not always realistic, is it? Not at all. Right. And we have to remember that things like systemic issues and just plain old luck play part too, you know? Totally. It's like you can't always control the cards you're dealt. Exactly but you can control how you play them, to some extent at least. And that's gotta be where self-compassion comes in, right? 100%. Like, it's okay if things don't go perfectly according to plan. Oh yeah, for sure. Be kind to yourself. Because none of us are perfect and that's all right. Exactly, and honestly, yeah. I think embracing those imperfections is where the real growth happens. How so? Well, it's like when we make mistakes, that's how we learn, right? Whoa, like, and then we can adapt, we can try again and again, and eventually. If you figure it out. Which brings us back to that question Corbin asks about responsibility. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, where does the buck stop? Is it all on us or? Or is there something bigger at play? It's a tough one. It is, and I'm not sure there's an easy answer. I mean, we all have choices we can make. Right. But then there's also circumstances, opportunities, just pure luck of the draw sometimes. It's like we're all just trying to figure it out as we go, right? Yeah, kind of like building the plane while you're flying it. Exactly. Yeah. So where does self-awareness fit into all of this? Well, that's I think that's huge, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not self-aware, you might be trying to fly the wrong plane. Oh, I like that. Right. Like you got to know your strengths. You got to know your limitations, what you're actually working with. And maybe maybe that's the biggest takeaway from all this. Like self-help isn't about being perfect. Oh, absolutely not. It's about progress. Yeah. It's about the journey, not the destination. 100%. And it's about being okay with the bumps along the way. You know, those setbacks, those moments where you have to course correct. It's all part of it. 
So for our listeners out there who are, you know, really trying to make positive changes, what's the best way to approach self-help? Honestly, yeah. I think approach it with a sense of curiosity. Don't be afraid to question things. Even if it's from like a big name self-help guru. Especially then. <laughs> Just because someone wrote a book doesn't mean it's the be all and end all, right? You're right. Find what resonates with you, what aligns with your values. Yeah. Take what works and leave the rest. Exactly. And, you know, m maybe most importantly, be kind to yourself through the whole process. Oh, that's huge. Self compassion. It's essential. Personal growth is not a straight line, it's messy. There are going to be twists and turns, and you just got to learn to embrace it all. Love that. Celebrate the wins, learn from the losses and just keep moving forward. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> That's what we're all about here on The Deep Dive. Always pushing for that growth. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you.